What's really interesting is to watch the response to these deaths and, you know, it's very... We see them being flicked up on the TV each day or on the radio. You hear so many people have died in the UK, the States, Brazil. And when you're hearing those numbers, it's really hard to, to understand what that means, that each one of those 155 deaths is a person with a family, with a network, with a job, and they're suddenly gone. You know, and I think that's been very, very difficult for people to understand. If we were describing it in the, you know, we had six plane crashes over a course of a week, people would be so horrified. As a doctor, each death is a tragedy. It's not a statistic. Understanding the intricacies of why and how a virus kills people doesn't happen overnight, and for good reason. The process of science itself is a slow, um, very rigorous process that involves um, having your data tested to and challenged by other independent scientists in the field. And that's a very important part of the publication process. And of course, that doesn't work very well in a climate where people are screaming for answers. But as global infections and death rates keep going up, science, in all its slow and methodical glory, unintentionally sends people on their own quest for answers. I would say that the biggest one is that Bill Gates created COVID to control the whole world and have everyone injected with a microchip, get their, their data and control how they think. Like, okay, wow. You know, that and between that and, and the idea that 5G networks were spreading the virus, I don't know which one was um, less, that had less scientific basis. Another alternative truth is that the virus was deliberately leaked from a lab in Wuhan to infect the world. Dr. Jerome Kim remembers a similar theory from the U.S. back in the 80s. Um, in fact, um, there is an association, uh, for instance, between um, a rumor that was started by the KGB, um, spread to an Indian newspaper, uh, about the HIV virus being invented by the U.S. Army uh, in order to kill people. You know, people in Africa, African Americans, and um, actually, eventually, uh, President Gorbachev, after he retired, wrote in his autobiography that um, this was a rumor that was planted. But by then, it had spread. So I think that some of these conspiracy theories actually find their origin in disinformation campaigns that are being conducted by state actors. SARS-CoV-2's ability to blur the lines between fact and fiction has been one of its greatest victories. No longer, I as a healthcare worker who knows infectious diseases for the last 25 years, can I challenge an Instagrammer with one million followers who throws a tweet or a following on something that's ridiculous as all the fake news? This is a way of disrupting our own morale, our own soldiers. It will send chaos into the system and that is the perfect recipe for the virus to spread. To ease the uncertainty of whether you're going to catch the virus or not, it helps to know where the virus is and who else has got it. So if you imagine that a pandemic, an epidemic in a society is like a forest fire, a case, a positive case, is actually just the fire in front of you. And what you really want to know is what is the fire doing not 100 feet from me, but a mile or two miles or three miles away from me. And the way you do that is with testing. Finding the people who are infected is critical because unless you can find them and quarantine them, they will keep spreading. Fortunately, humans love their mobile phones. And if there's one thing they are good at, it's creating phone apps. I actually have re remember um, getting a text that said, we've detected a, an infection in your area and a person who came back from the United States. Uh, if you had been to the particular supermarket between 10 and 10, 10, 15, this person had been there. And so if you develop symptoms or think you might have been exposed, uh, show this message and go for testing. Which means every individual you find 
you must immediately track those people around and lock them down. This will be put on quarantine. If at the end of the day, no one else falls sick in this group, you declare them free, you might even test them, show that they are negative, and they are returned back to community. That way, you control the virus, one case at a time, one number at a time. 